Hi everyone, I'm so happy you've joined me today. Thanks for spending part of your day or evening with me and I hope that this past week you were able to find some of the wonderful silver linings of life. Well, this video was actually inspired by someone that I follow on YouTube. You may have heard of her, you may not have heard of her, but let me share my screen with you. Her channel name is Little Poet and I've been following her for a while now and I and I find that every week I really look forward to her videos. Um, she is about my age. Her content is so... well it really resonates with me and I know it resonates with a lot of you too. And so today she posted a video and she had asked some other content creators to tag. Uh, she asked some tag questions. Now I've never done a tag video before and so I have a little extra time on my hands today so I thought that I would do this so I would reach back to her and answer some of the questions that she asked of us. But before I do I just want to talk about what's on my head. This uh, wig that I have on my head her name is Meadow and Meadow is by Noriko and I actually reviewed Meadow for Wig Studio One back a, a while back and mute my sound. And so I'm not going to go into a big long review of Meadow today, but you can head over there. I'll drop the link below and tell you all about it. And you can see that for me, she's short, um, she's not a pixie, but I love Meadow because she's got this rooting here. And sometimes in the comments section, people will say, well, no, it's kind of the opposite. You know, when you're gray, when you're dark, you've got the gray skunk thing going on, and, and now you've got the black skunk thing going on. But honestly, I love it. I think it's edgy. I think it's youthful. And I think it's it's very on trend. And I think it's going to be on trend for a long time. So again, there's the video of me in my upstairs studio um, recording Meadow a few months ago. And as I said, I'll leave that down for you. Now, uh, just want to add very quickly that uh, Meadow, I said that she is from Noriko. Now, most Noriko wigs fit me very snugly, very tight. I can already feel her riding back on my head. Um, but I do love it and I'm very sad that I'm going to have to sell this wig. So I'll put her in my in my store probably at some point this week. But I hate to do that because I love her. The color of Meadow reminds me very much of the long wig that I have by Noriko, which is called Angelica. However, that is in a large size, so she fits me just perfectly. I probably could get away with this for a couple of hours, but after a while it would I would begin to feel uncomfortable. So I hope somebody out there can uh, use this particular wig. And as I said, I'll put her in my wig store at some point during the week. Speaking of my wig store, here it is. And if you go to someonewithgrayhair.com, it's right on the front page. It's right on the landing page, so you will not have trouble finding this wig at all. I think that it's been updated to reflect today. Uh, but everything that you see here is pretty much for sale still. Uh, everything just got dropped into the store this past week. Um, so this wig that I have on my head will show right here. Very easy to purchase. Just go through PayPal, follow these instructions right here. First come, first serve. I only use PayPal and I only mail to the United States and everything goes out priority two day shipping. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to cover that. Now back to Little Poet and the questions that she has asked in her video. So I'm going to just scroll down. Here goes. 
So now I've never done a tag video. So Susan, I hope that this does you proud, but I'm going to attempt to answer each one of your questions. Make this nice and big so I can see them. And there they all are. Okay, let's take these one by one. Now, name something people don't know about you. Hmm, people don't know about me. Um, I once danced with the President of the United States. Yes, I did. If I tell you who he is, I don't know if you would hold that against me, so I probably shouldn't say it, but I did, when I, and it was when I was very young, and I had the thrill of going to an inaugural ball and had a very fancy dress on. Well, what was fancy for me at the time? And I was standing in the ballroom, and there were a bunch of us kind of holding back, just gawking at the president. And um, all of a sudden, the Secret Service man came over to me, and he says, young lady, or something like this, young lady, the president would like to dance with you. Wow, me? Really? And so I went and I danced with the President of the United States. And I, I have to say that it was thrilling. And unfortunately, I didn't have a picture. I didn't have a camera. It's not like today with the kids have, they, they document every single second of their life. But boy, I sure wish that I had had that moment so that I could, at least a still picture so that I could, so that I could, prove that I really did dance with the President of the United States. Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but I thought it was a big deal. A little girl from, from a little tiny town up in uh, upstate New York dancing with the President. So it, w it was wonderful. Okay, question number two. Is aging more like a dance or a prize fight? Hmm. I think that aging... I think some days it's like a dance and other days it's like a prize fight. Now this week, this past two weeks, uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I had, I had um, contracted COVID and thank goodness I didn't have it that bad. It really was more like a, a bad cold, but, but the difference between the COVID between COVID and having a bad cold is the fatigue. The fatigue is still with me. And I remember saying to my, and it's been almost three weeks now, this coming Tuesday will be three weeks. And I remember saying to my husband, I feel like I'm a hundred years old. And so in that sense, aging can be like a prize fight. You're just hanging in there. You just, you just got to go the next round. You just have to keep on fighting, get out of bed and move on with your life. What is the alternative? Is the alternative just to lay down and give up? I don't think so. And the other part of that question is aging more like a dance. I think that sometimes it is like a dance because we've come to the we've come to the point in our life where I remember one of my girlfriends used to talk about being old and she said, I can say anything I want because I'm old. I'm old now. <laughs> Mm, I'm not sure I totally agree with it, but I understand why she said it. But it is like a dance, and it's a beautiful dance. Think of it this way, especially those of you who are 60 plus, and I know that most of you, because my analytics tell me, most of my subscribers are over 60. And isn't it wonderful that we've gotten to this, po this point in our life where we can look back and say, hey, I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still speaking. I'm still dreaming. And that brings me to another point. And I've been mulling this over all week. And I actually titled this video, Is it too late for you to what? Is it too late for you to dream? Is it too late for you to dance? Is it too late for you to sing? Is it too late for you to start a new business? Is it too late for you to have a second romance? But I that's say, my question to you. And I think that would make a nice tag video. 
I would love you to comment below. Is it too late for you? And if you think it's too late, why? Because I don't. And that's one of the things that I have learned, I would say, the most in these last few years of my life and having pretty much recovered from chronic pain. Still with me sometimes, but I do believe that no matter where you are in life, it's a choice. What are our options to just give up or to enjoy and find something for the rest of our life that can give us a purpose? I think having a purpose in life is not an easy thing to find. It truly isn't. You have to dig deep. You have to do some soul searching. And our purpose can change from time to time. And uh, so, yeah, I think that it's very important in terms of whether we dance through aging or fight through aging if we have a purpose, a reason to get up every morning. And that doesn't mean every morning we bound out of bed and, oh, I've got my purpose to fulfill today. No. But it does mean that there's an underlying guide to why you are here. And again, it's not easy to find. And I'm not saying that I have found it, but I do feel that I'm on, on the right track. And I want to encourage those of you who want to have a purpose in your life or lead a purposeful life to continue on in that vein. And how do you find your purpose? I think that's a million dollar question, but ask some people what they think that you're good at. A thought came to me in preparing for today's video and it's actually a line from one of my favorite movies of all time, Notting Hill with Julia Roberts. I think it's toward the end of the video. Julia says, there are things to say. Things aren't going very well and it's our last day. Absolutely, yeah, you're, you're clearly very busy. But if, if you could wait, there are things to say. Okay. And she's asking to be heard. Well, I think that there are things to say that only you can share. They are unique to you. Maybe things that you've been through in your life, things that you're good at, things that maybe you've taught in the past. Maybe you were in the world of finance. Maybe you were in the world of real estate. Anything. Maybe you were in the medical profession. Maybe you were in the educational space. But when we get to this age of our life, the age of wisdom, hopefully, when that hair starts to turn gray and white and silver, hopefully, right along with it has come wisdom. And that wisdom is yours to share. And how you use it to share? Well, of course, there are many ways to do that. You could start a blog. You could start a, a YouTube channel. You could... You could talk on Facebook, and, and you may be thinking, come on, Angela, I'm 60-something, I'm 70-something. It doesn't matter. It's not that hard, and it's exhilarating, and it's thrilling. Don't have a camera? Have a web? Do you have a, do you have a phone, an iPhone? Put the, you know what I did when I first started? I took my iPhone. I sat in front of a window. If you look at my early videos... I sat in front of a window, I propped up my iPhone on some books, and I started to talk. I didn't even use the back camera, I used the front-facing camera. And I had two lights in front of me, right on either side of me, aimed at my head, and then I had the, and then I had the light coming in from the window, and I started to talk. And you know what? Those videos did very well, and that's how my channel grew. So, if you have a smartphone, if you have an iPad, anything like that, prop it up, hit play, make yourself a little script of what you want to say. That's always a great idea, so you can kind of stay on point and start sharing. And if you're looking for some tips, just email me. If you have any questions, email me and I'll answer you. But you have things to share. There are things to say.
Don't look at it as, oh, I'll never, nobody will watch the video. Initially, they might not, but they might, and then they may share it. It all depends on what you say, how you say it, and how often you say it. So, I did want to share that very important piece of using your wisdom, using the years behind you, and using the gifts and the talents and the experience that you've had in your life to help others. You know, when I started looking at wig videos, I I tell you, I just, I binge watched a whole bunch of content because I didn't know a thing about wigs. And that's how I learned. And so th there's something special. I can't say it enough. There's something special that you do, no matter what it is, that people are waiting and needing for you to for you to share. Question number three. If you are depressed or sad, do you tell people or do you hide it? Hmm, that's a great question. I've never been the kind of person that struggles with depression. I've been a pretty joyful person all my life. And I'm not saying that just because it sounds right. It's really true. If I'm depressed or sad, it's probably because I had a fight with my husband. I don't usually fight with anybody else. <gasps> Horrors! You fight with your husband? I do. <laughs> Very strong-willed, opinionated person. And yes, if we have words, we'll always make up. Thank God we're in our, how many years are we married now? 23rd year. And uh, it's good to get those things out and on the table. But if we don't, that can make me feel very depressed. The other thing... Um, that makes me feel sad is this the state of the world right now just the state of the world and I know that you all know what I mean and yeah I do people I do tell people not so much on YouTube but personal friends um, how I'm feeling about the state of the world and uh, it's it's difficult and I remember as a younger woman I never thought about the state of the world I never thought about getting older it just wasn't even on my radar. But now, at this stage of our life, I'm sure you understand, it's on our radar. And we wonder, what's it going to be like in 10 years? What's it going to be like when I'm 80? What's it going to be like when I'm 90? And Susan, in this video, talked about being alone. Susan in her video, not in my video. With Susan in her video, in her video, True Confessions, um, talks about being alone and you're not alone and I I confess I have t I have at times said I'm afraid of being old and alone because I do not have any natural children of my own pretty much everyone I love uh, in my own blood family lives far away from me and you know kids are busy and they have their own lives to lead and you wonder will you be alone when you're older but I don't think that we should borrow trouble from tomorrow. The better part of wisdom is today has enough trouble of its own. Deal with today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Question number Four, what is your number one challenge in life? That is a good question. My number one challenge in life. I think my number one challenge in life is loving well. And relationships. I am a very, I am very much of a loner type personality. I could sit in front of this camera and talk to you till the end of time. But in terms of one-on-one -on -one relationships, I don't know why, but they are challenging for me. And I know that about myself, and so I ask God to help me to be more loving, more sensitive, more aware that others are more important than myself, and, and to look to others and and be considerate of their own interests and their own feelings. So yes, my number one challenge is life is to be loving. 
And, uh, yeah. Name two things that make you happy. One of the things that makes me most happy in my life is when I sing. I love to sing. I love to sing, and I have a channel over at ReverbNation.com. I'll link it for you below. Many of you have already been there and commented. And um, about a decade ago, we went down to Nashville, and we recorded this beautiful, beautiful, um, w really world-class CD. Our orchestra was Oh my goodness, we had a live orchestra. We had, My microphone itself was a $15,000 microphone, if you can imagine that. It was the thrill of a lifetime, and any chance I get to sing, I will sing. Now, I didn't do a lot of singing during COVID. Obviously, I didn't do a lot of singing when I got sick, but I love to sing, and it makes me very, very happy two things that make you happy. I would say the other thing that makes me happy is when my husband and I are happy together. It's like a little bit of heaven on earth. Happy together, happy with friends, happy socially, you know, just together. And those two things, being happily married, being happily singing, are the two of the thrills of my life. Two things that make me sad. First thing that makes me sad is if my husband and I are having a bad day. That makes me sad. <laughs> I'm talking a lot about my husband. But hey, uh, Susan's video is called True Confessions. I have a wonderful marriage. My husband is a wonderful man. He's very attentive. He's very loving. But marriage is challenging. Why? I remember a book one time when I was a, a new bride called You Married a Sinner. Well, I I am not perfect. I'm far from I'm far from perfect and so is he. And we know that. And so when those imperfect time comes, those imperfect times come, it makes me sad. I would say the other thing that makes me sad is the state of the country and the state of our world. I try not to think about it too much, but again, as a younger person, I never thought about that, and um, you know, I don't. I don't like to see uh, the foundations crumble. Whatever that means to you in your life, when the foundations crumble, how can we survive? What are we to do? And so, yeah, that's that makes me feel sad. And I pray that things can turn around in our country and in our world very very soon I hope and I pray about that do you feel question seven do you feel misunderstood hmm boy Susan that's a really good question misunderstood why would somebody misunderstand me hmm sometimes I feel misunderstood because I think in your life Especially when you show somebody you've got a gospel album. Then they think, oh boy, okay, here we go. <laughs> no, I, I can honestly tell you that believing in God, believing in the name above all names, Jesus, has blessed my life. And so how could I not ever share things about him? And <clears throat> so feeling misunderstood about putting me in a box because I talk about things that a lot of people don't talk about. You're never supposed to talk about politics or religion, but there are things that are close to my heart. And I guess what I'm saying is don't put, don't put me in a box. Get to know me for yourself. Get to know the things that I love, the things that I hold dear. And the why of feeling misunderstood is, I guess there's that big J word, judgment. I, f I, f I feel misunderstood because sometimes people judge me. I feel misunderstood because sometimes people judge when I talk about God or because I'm a gospel singer and they might put me in a little category and 
I don't think that that's fair. And I hope that I don't do that to somebody. And if I do, I need to stop doing it. But yeah, sometimes you can feel misunderstood in this old world where people, where it's not popular anymore to talk about God in heaven or things that you hold, values that you hold dear. And so because of that, someone might put you in a little box. That that makes me feel misunderstood. Is there a special person in your life? Yes, there is a special person in my life, and his name is Jesus. Yes, I said the J word. <laughs> Jesus. And you know why I, I choose that as the most special person? Because nobody else close to me can be special to me without Jesus being in my life. There's a saying in marriage, if you have marriage is a triangle with God at the top, and then here's one spouse and here's the other. And it, as you're both are getting closer to God, you have a wonderful relationship with each other. And so that's why Jesus is my most special person in my life. I believe that he hears everything I say, and I'm so thankful for that. And of course, the other person that is special in my life is my husband. And I often think, and sometimes we talk about it, now I don't want to get you sad, but one of us is going to go first. One of us, and he doesn't even want to talk about it, but one of us is going to go first, and I just keep, I can't even imagine what that day will be like. The number one thing you would change about yourself. The number one thing I would change about myself is having the confidence to do the fearful thing. Having the confidence to do the thing that I fear most. Right now, um, I, I'm not really fearing anything. Years ago, it was singing in front of a crowd, uh, getting in an airplane, but sometimes the fear factor comes in before the faith factor. So I guess the thing that I would change is working on that faith factor and have that be the first response rather than the fear factor. And I think that that has a lot to do with how we're raised. I really do. I think that parents have a lot to do with building the character of a young person so that their default is not fear, but their default is faith and confidence. So I think that us grandmothers and grandfathers and aunts and uncles, but especially us grandmothers, have a lot to do with building into the lives of our grandchildren and building faith and building confidence into their little spirits so that they don't fear. There's always going to be a certain element of fear, but we don't want that to be the default because we just heard uh, something, my husband and I, uh, was it last night or today that by the time, oh, it was today, it was a uh, church service online today, that by the time a child is 11 years old, that character, how they're feeling about themselves, it's set. And so those first 10 years, certainly those first 10, 11 years are foundational for their little lives to go on to be what God designed and created them to be. Do you carry a lot of secrets about your life? Will you ever tell? I really don't. I am an absolute open book. Um, if I do have a secret, it's probably about my weight. <laughs> I don't like to tell people how much I weigh because I, no matter what I do, it seems like I still carry around the same 15 pounds. It's my own fault. I confess, I like heavy cream. I like heavy cream in my coffee. Remember that song? Cause you're the cream in my coffee. I taste like honey from the bees. <laughs> I ran out of breath. Yeah, I like cream in my coffee. Now that's not a secret, but... I suppose that's the secret that I carry. Will you ever tell? I just did. Okay. Exposing the myth. The thing most misunderstood about being a real-life, mature woman. Hmm. 
the thing most misunderstood about being a real life mature woman. Well, you know what? The thing that just strikes me the most about that is we're no different really than when we were younger women. It's just that our bodies are older. Misunderstand older women in that they they think that we might think that we are irrelevant, that we are invisible. And I'm here to tell you that that to me is a big misunderstanding on the part of many, many people. Now, it is possible that this generation, this, this uh, as they say, baby boomer generation, is nothing like the generations that came before. But I think it, if you're a person who has things to say, things to do, things to share, things to accomplish, whether you're young or old, mature, I think it's a myth that all of a sudden you go sit on a porch or that you want to sit on a porch. Now, of course, there's probably some people, maybe they had a really hard life um, when they were younger, a really demanding career, and maybe they just want to chill and sit around for a while and just recover. I get that. But I just think that this myth of a mature woman it would what, what i mean what is a mature woman our 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 skin is more wrinkled our hair is more white we have to put a wig on our whatever but maturity i think it's no different in our spirits than when we we were young how many times have you said i just feel like a young girl in an old woman's body now, we usually say that when we're sick or if we're having a bad day, hair day or we forgot to use our skin cream. <laughs> but seriously, I do believe it's a myth. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So that's it for so. today, everyone. Uh, just a gentle reminder to visit my private collection of wigs that I have for sale. And you can see them all here. What I've done is this graphic that you see will link to the actual review that I did for that wig. And um, again, PayPal, and I only ship to the United States. Thank you for visiting with me today. I hope that this next coming week that you'll look for and experience the silver linings of life. And if you do, maybe you'll share them with us in the comments below. See you next time on Silver Linings. Bye-bye.